Hi. I wanted to take a minute to talk about uh, the coronavirus. Now, I am absolutely no expert. I want to open up with saying that, and I'm sure you guys have seen tons of videos by now about this. Uh, but I do have some psychological background, and uh, I've had a lot of my community asking me specifically what I think of it. So I figured, you know, I'll just make a video. Um, first and foremost, if you don't know me and you don't know who I am, I am King Bullet. And before I started streaming and making YouTube videos and content creation in general, I was in college to get my bachelor's degree in psychology and criminal justice. I was six months from the double bachelor's degree when financial aid screwed me over, or else I would have a degree in psychology. That being said, I am not certified, I do not have my degree, and I am not an expert. But I do know what can happen if misinformation and if things just kind of go awry. So I wanted to take a minute and kind of talk to you guys. Uh, first and foremost, don't panic. You see everywhere that there's people panicking, there's just a whole bunch of nonsense happening, everything is going crazy, the world's shutting down. Yes. That is true, and I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you. That is true. The world is shutting down, and for good reason. But that does not mean you should panic. First and foremost, if you did not know, the more you stress and the more you worry, the weaker your immune system. It is actually proven that if you stress out all the time and you worry and you start panicking, you actually get sick faster or you get sick where you would normally not get sick so don't panic and the other big reason why you shouldn't panic is if you can remain calm while everybody else is panicking around you panic spreads but also calmness spreads. The coronavirus is, as it states, a virus. A virus cannot live outside of a host for extended periods. This is the only virus that has found to have a longevity longer than a day. It can live up to seven days outside of a host. So that is why you see a lot of places shutting down because before the widespread holy crap, holy crap started, if you were exposed, you walked into a place, you could have exposed that place. So if say you walked into a restaurant, cough, cough, put your hand on the table, coronavirus is on that table. Granted, establishments should be doing proper hygienic solutions, such as wiping the table down with proper hygienic ways, not just with a damp rag, which some do. But if it was taken care of properly, like they should be, then it's gone. But unfortunately, that's not always the case, because sometimes cough, cough, you put your hand on the seat, they don't always wipe the seats down. They can't always get to every chair, whatever. There's a hundred different ways that if you were exposed and you coughed and you put your hand down somewhere or whatever, it could have just sat on that surface and you might not have even realized that you could have possibly already had and got through the coronavirus. It is different for every person as every disease is. Sometimes it is a lot more scary and like, oh my god, sometimes it's just cough, cough for a couple days. It is 
most worrying in children and elderly people. But, again, there's no reason to panic. If your kid gets sick, there is a high probability that it's still just a common cold and or the flu or anything like that. Am I saying don't isolate? No. If you are sick, isolate yourself. That way, you know, if someone who is immunocompromised might be around or anything like that, you can, you know, save them from having the same misery. But there's no reason to panic. Um, it, this is just a new disease that kind of came out of nowhere. And if you or someone you know is sick, you staying calm in the face of millions of other people freaking out can help change the people around you to also be calm. So, again, I'm not a, an expert on any of this, but I know how the mind works. If you see someone freaking out because, holy crap, holy crap, uh, there was a case at this hospital or there was a case and I ran into this person and they're freaking out. For all they know, their immune system might have been strong enough and they resisted the coronavirus. And that's that. There's, there's nothing else to say about it. Some people have strong enough immune systems where they don't have to worry about getting sick. Honestly, and I, I, gotta, I gotta choose my words carefully here. Honestly, the thing that I see being the biggest issue from the coronavirus isn't the virus itself. It's the panic and what it's going to do to the economy. Um, as of today, my state that I'm in, if you guys don't know, I live in Pennsylvania on the east coast of the United States. The state that I am in has shut down all non-essential facilities. That means no restaurants are open. They're pretty much it's only drive throughs for food, stores, and gas stations that are open. Everything else is shut down for at least two weeks. There are some places, some states, some countries who are shutting down indefinitely. That is going to cause the biggest issue, in my opinion, over the virus itself. The virus can be beaten with just rest, taking care of yourself, being smart, being good about your hygiene, and all that other stuff. You would be surprised, and I, I want... The, the reason for this video is I went to Walmart today as of recording this. I actually just got back from Walmart and I saw people wearing face masks. You can look this up if you want, if you want to fact check me, but wearing a face mask is not going to help you. If someone is in that vicinity and they have the coronavirus and it is airborne, a face mask is not going to stop you from getting the coronavirus because you have an opening on the sides. And I, I actually didn't know this until I saw on the news they were actually talking with a medical professional, one of the people who were working hard on figuring out what the coronavirus is and what it's doing and how to beat it. He specifically said that face masks that you can buy from an everyday store will not be effective. And that's okay. That is okay. Medical professionals have face masks that specifically protect them and it is confirmed that it will not... Let me rephrase. It is confirmed that the medical professionals face masks will protect them if they come into contact with someone with the coronavirus. So 
what does what does that mean when you see someone walking around with a face mask then it means they're freaking out they're panicking they're they're taking unnecessary measures and you see someone walking into Walmart we'll say and uh you see oh they're wearing a face mask you might be like okay sure others might see that like oh my god oh my god they're sick i should get a face mask and then they start panicking taking unnecessary precautions can lead others to panic our actions affect everybody around us so even if you're not sick but you're like hey i'm gonna wear a face mask that doesn't help you at all and if anything it creates a, f a bubble of possible panic around you and if you're knowledgeable if you're staying up to date with what the medical professionals are saying and you know what works what doesn't you see it and you're like okay fine other people see it and they're like, oh my god, that person's sick, Stray stay away as far as you can. And then other people start panicking because that person's panicking and it just causes a ripple effect. It's like when you throw a rock into a lake. One, one rock creates one ripple and then, and then that ripple creates another and then another and then another until eventually this small little pebble this super small has created a puddle over 10,000 times its size or a ripple I should say 10,000 times its size and that's the biggest thing that you should be focusing on in my opinion yes if you're sick isolate yourself but don't panic about it. All right, so you're sick. Okay, fine. All right, what can I do? We'll say, say you live alone. Ah, oh, crap, I need food. Call up a friend, call up a family member. Say, hey, I'm sick. I don't want to go to the store. I need to get some food. Can you get this for me? They're like, yeah, sure. How are we going to get it to you, though? They're like, leave it on my front porch. Leave it at, leave it at my front door. Text me whenever you're back into your car or call me when you're back in your car. I'll come outside and I'll grab it. That way you're not exposing them or you're having a less chance of exposing them. And you still have the ability to get the supplies that you need to live. And the biggest thing, absolutely 100% biggest thing right now, to stay Calm. all right uh, i know a lot of people are losing work right now uh, people are getting laid off they're getting unpaid leave everything else there's always going to be a solution there's always going to be a way that you can figure stuff out for those of you who don't know i have been unemployed for three years and i have had little to no income for three years that is why I am pushing the YouTube channel so hard, why I'm pushing stream so hard, everything else. At the end of the day, it's possible. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be exciting. It's going to suck for a little bit, but it's possible. If you don't know what to do, if you are out of a job, if you don't have any income and you don't know what to do, the best thing that I can say to do, and I'm only saying this from something that I would think about, is talk to family members, see what's going on with them. Then talk to your, not, not the welfare people, but talk to people who do the disability or Talk to people who help with housing or something like that. They might know, if they don't know what you can do to supplement your income or supplement 
anything that you might need while you are waiting to get your uh, get back to work they will know someone that you can talk to or contact so that you can figure out what you should do and what you should be trying to focus on so overall just don't panic um the more you panic the more you worry the worse things get um obviously people have stocked up and if you haven't been to the store yet you're you're gonna be probably surprised uh i've never seen walmart as empty as it was and um you know people panic bought which being being someone who doesn't need a lot to live off of that's not too bad for me but there's some people who might need more so you might want to you know just go to other stores or you know if there's not something there chances are you might be able to go back the next day and they might have restocked some stores are getting truck shipments daily and those truck shipments could have what you're looking for so you know don't don't freak out about it and uh say thank you to the retail store workers um they are some of the people who are getting affected the most by this it doesn't matter if it's a walmart retail store worker or if it's a clothes a clothes place or whatever when people go into a a fit of panic like a lot of people have been they go and panic by and the first person in the line of fire is the retail store workers and those those retail store workers they don't have any ability to do anything more than what they tell you so if you go up to someone and you're in walmart and you're like hey do you have any more toilet paper and they say no we're sorry don't give them attitude don't be like all grumpy and everything else because there's nothing that they can do you know it it could have been worse so be nice to them and if anything even if you don't need anything you see a retail store worker say thank you or or say something nice to them because i i have a friend who is a re retail store worker and he's been massively stressed and things have been horrible because customers are just on his back constantly just want this i want that i want this i want that and he can't do anything about it and so we all know how some people can be you you don't get what you want you throw an adult temper tantrum and you start cussing out the retail worker because they didn't get it for you and they didn't have the ability to so their entire day gets ruined just almost as soon as they walk in the door so say thank you to them or say something nice say good work thanks for the hard work something like that just to just to try to help make their day as well because they're they're getting hit pretty hard and they're doing everything they can to not only keep calm while at work but also keep calm while people are freaking out on them and that's probably the biggest thing is trying to keep calm when someone is freaking out or panicking towards you specifically is very difficult so just be nice to people help people out if they need it and don't freak out there's 6.9 to 7.1 billion people in this world 
chances are someone has someone somewhere has a more terrifying disease than the coronavirus that's never gotten out or chances are there's someone who is working around the clock for a treatment plan or chances are you know there's someone who you know just needs that calmness and appreciative talk from you so be good be nice and stay safe you know proper hygiene uh, obviously the stores don't have very much hand sanitizer but wash your hands regularly soap and water um you know if you shower every other day it might be a good idea to just shower every day you know just just shower down every day even if you stay in your house just a, a little bit extra focus on hygiene could go a long way you, uh, even if you have coronavirus or if you have symptoms of the coronavirus that little extra step could be what helps you beat it without it getting to the point of being fatal so that that's all i wanted to say was just be calm and be nice to people um so thank you guys so much for watching and uh you know be be calm make sure you uh you go tell a retail worker thank you and uh i will see all of you guys next time bye guys